So we have the Rebel 235 uh, EMP. What we're doing here today is we have the Dual Shield 710XM series wire, 045 diameter, and that that's an all position flux core that's designed to run on mixed gas, 7525, 75 argon, 25 CO2 mixes. Okay? On this particular unit, we decided to run the, that with the 235 because uh, 045 is a good wire right around the uh, lower like 180s all the way up into the 300 amp range where this machine can handle. Other thing is, on the on these size flux core wires, typically come on the 12 inch spools, which the new Rebel 235 uh, comes equipped to handle the standard 12 inch spool. A lot, of, a lot of different things we want to do with the dual shield product to make sure we're running it properly. Um, a lot of times we might bring habits over from the MIG welding side of the world. Stepping actions, circles, although can be used, it's not suggested that we do use those techniques. Um, some operators still do it, but what we're really looking for is a nice, steady um, drag. So we don't want to do stepping, we want to do on like a T-joint here. To give you an idea of what we're looking for, we want to be about 5 to 10 degrees and we want to be on a nice drag angle. We don't want to be laying the gun over too far because um, we'll lose focus of the arc into the base material and we might not get pen proper penetration if we, if we lay the gun angle over it. So we want to be almost straight in, 5 to 10 degrees uh, drag angle. The other reason we drag is while we're welding, there's a slag system. Flux core wires have slag inside of them or have flux inside of them that will form as flag as, as the weld cools. This helps protect the weld during cooling. It also helps hold the weld in position as it cools. So for this wire, all position flux core, we have a nice tight slag system. So when we're going out of position, it builds a shelf for us for the wire, for the puddle to hang in there. What we're worried about is, the reason we want to stay out in front of the weld is because that slag, if it gets underneath the, the molten pole, it can cause lack of fusion defects, which therefore we won't, now won't be able to get we won't have consistent penetration. And if we get lack of fusion, obviously the weld's now not, integrity has been lost. Other things we want to look for is, it's very easy to get carried away with this wire and try to make a very big bead. We don't really want to do that, especially on the first pass. We want to make sure that we're, we're staying on the lead edge of the puddle and we're getting the drive into the part. We want to make sure we're going to catch the, uh, the root of the first pass. After that, we can go into some weave techniques as long as we don't go way too big. Obviously, the more we weave, the more heat we put into a part, and we can start to affect the mechanical properties in a different way. But definitely on the first pass, we want to make sure we're, we have a nice tight arc. As far as settings go, the wire is very forgiving, but we want to make sure that we don't run too high of a voltage. We don't want to lose, once again, focus of that arc, especially on the first pass. Also, if we run way too high of a voltage, we start to undercut we can have other issues there also. So we want to get it right where the wire is burning off, just right on top of the puddle. We don't want the wire diving into the puddle. Typically that means when we see the wire almost driving into the molten puddle, it means we have way too low of a voltage or way too high of a wire feed speed. If we have uh, the other reverse, the arc is very long. It looks like the arc, the wire is burning off way above the puddle and that's not good either. Now we don't have that drive. We don't have that energy into the part, which we need. Dual shield wires have a lot of have a lot of bonuses to them. The slag system helps us with out of position welding. That's where a lot of these products really do shine, especially the X series product, the 710 XM. We do have some flattened horizontal 700 X, which is for flattened horizontal welding only. But then the out of position wires, this is this is where we get the performance. We can use pulse machines and hard wires, but we're going to be moving very slow, and we have a we have a lot of risk of lack of penetration because when we don't have a slag system that we have in the flux core wires we don't we can't run a high amperage we have to stay low on the amps usually on the hard wire processes we might get up into the 140 160 maybe 180 range where on the dual shield products we can be running two three two to three hundred amps in the out of the position and that's that's where we can really really get a lot more drive and a lot more uh, deposition rates. When, it, when I'm using a, like a hard wire out of position, I have to turn it way down, which means my wire speed speeds down, my amps are down, I have 
potential issues for lack of penetration. Um, I have to move real slow because I don't have a slag system like I do with the, with the dual shield products. And then on top of that, um, lower wire feed speeds, lower deposition, longer weld times to complete the part. So out of position, flux core wires are definitely the way to go for speed and for pr productivity. What's the difference between a standard cord wire and a premium cord wire? Uh, the technology, uh, we did spend a lot of time on the engineering of it, how we manufacture the wire and the, and the, uh, the components that we put into the slag systems, the flux. That's, that's really the, the proprietary stuff that we do to make our wires stand apart. We are the, we're, come from the company that invented flux core wires. So, I mean, that's always been one of our premier products. On flux core, on the vertical, we go either straight in or a slight vertical push. Now, when we talked about flat and horizontal, we, we explained that we want to do a slight drag angle, but in the flat and horizontal, that's to avoid rolling slag. In the vertical, gravity is helping us by keeping that slag down at the bottom side as we're going up. So we can afford to do a slight push and everything will work fine. In addition to gun angle, one other thing that we really got to pay attention to is our electrical stick out. Some people might get this confused with what they can visual stick out. In this case, this nozzle is set up with a recess. Average stick out that we like to run, we always, always consult the, the data books. They have the ESOs written in there. We want to stay in that range. But general rule of thumb that we like to use for the 045 is about a three quarter inch electrical stick out. Some people might might look at this stick out and reference it off the nozzle, but we need to make sure that if we're running a recessed contact tip, like we are here, we want an overall three-quarter inch from the from where the wire would touch the part all the way back to the contact tip.